Hi guys, so welcome to the discussion of mock 18 quantitative aptitude part. A uh, very uh, good paper, I would say it was a paper which was a combination of good questions with easy questions. It tested the metal of the students overall, right? So it depends on you know how good are your selection abilities, and I think it was not a very difficult paper. Let's see how do we go ahead with this. So this is the first question that we are discussing here. The first question says that uh, the uh, arithmetic mean of five positive integers is 24, right? Now, when I talk about arithmetic mean, then I know the sum total. So A plus B plus C plus D plus E, right? And it says A is less than B, B is less than C. That means they are in ascending order. Now, the sum total is always 120. That is 24 into 5. So we are again applying average into number of terms is equal to sum total. Right. If the value of the highest integer known is 50, so I know that this value is 50. Now I do not know the remaining terms. Now the question is saying find the maximum possible value of the median. Now median is always the central value. So if there are five terms, the median is going to be 5 plus 1 by 2. That is the third term will be the median. Now do not forget that median is always when the terms are arranged in ascending order. Okay. Now. So this is 120 and the highest value is 50. And I know that these are my five integers. I want to maximize this. If I want to maximize C, let me minimize A and B. So if I minimize A and B, then what do I get? Let's keep C and D separate because I want to maximize the value of C. So 1 plus 2 plus C plus D plus 50 is equal to 120. Or eventually I get the value of C plus D is equal to 120 minus 53, uh, which is 60. Now I want to maximize the value of C and C has to be less than D, right? So the easier way to look at this is I divide it by 2. If I divide it by 2, then I get 33.5. So I can take 33 as one of the terms and 34 as the other terms. So I can say C is equal to 33 and D is equal to 34, which is satisfying my given equation, right? So 1 and 2 are 1 is less than 2, 2 is less than 33, 33 is less than 34 and 34 is less than 50. So these are my five terms in ascending order. And I also see that the maximum possible value of C, which is the median, is going to be 33. And therefore, the answer for this question is going to be 33. So not a difficult question at all, guys. Uh, these kind of questions have been coming up in CAT. So one, you need to understand the median of a certain series, right? So I repeat, median is first condition is you have to arrange the terms in ascending order. If number of terms is odd, then the median is the central value. N plus 1 by 2th term is the median. Similarly, if the number of terms is even, then the median is going to be the value, the average or the middle value of the central two values or N by 2th term plus N by 2 plus the 1th term divided by 2. This will again further give you the middle value of the series. Clear guys, so this is the first question, easily doable question. We are introduced to the term called median. So you should have got the answer of this question, right? So let's move to the next one. Now, this was again a very lovely question, which was uh, again based on averages. So when I see a question on averages, I should not hesitate to get my answer here. So the average number of model cars that patrons of a hobby club is 55. Okay. It is to be noted that the number of model cars each patron has distinct keywords are important. And all patrons have at least one model car, but it is mandated condition to join the club. Okay. That means these are positive integer solutions because number of cars will always be integer. A patron whose collection boasts of 68 model cars joined the club. And as a result, the average number of model cars of patrons increased by one. Now, I can do this in two ways, guys. Now, I do not know the existing number of people. So, I can write, let's say there are n people. 55 into n is my sum total. Average into number of terms. Clear? Plus a person with 68 is joining. Clear? Divided by n plus 1 is equal to 56. But this will in, you know, ensure that you are calculating a lot. So you will get the value of n from here, right? Or the other way around, what we can do is we can use average as an equal distribution. 55, 55, 55, 55 is the average of certain people. I do not know how many people are these. 
a new guy of 68 joins. So I will take this as 55. So how much extra did he bring? He brought in 13 extra. Now, because of this 13, everybody got 1, 1, 1, 1, 1 extra job. So 13 is divided 1 each to everyone. That means I had 13 people, including the new patron. Clear? So 13 will be including the new patron. Including the new patron will be 13 or earlier they had uh, 12 people before this. Clear is? Yeah. yeah. Now let's look at the next part of the question. Now this question says that uh, what is the maximum possible number of model cars that anybody could can have? So let's do this in a very simplified way. I have total 13 people. So this is my first guy, second guy, third guy, and so on, so on, so on. These are my 12 people, and this is my 13th person, that is 68. And this sum total we know is 56 into 13. Okay? That is 56 into 13. So 56 into 13 can be simplified as 56 into 10, which is going to be how much days? 560. And we are looking at 56 into 3, right? So 3, 6 are 18, 8 I carry 1, so 168. So this gives me 8, this gives me 2, and the total of I have is 728. Now from here, if I remove the 68 from here, then we have what here, guys? Clear? So we have the sum of remaining 12 people. Clear will be 728 minus 68. So this gives me 0, 660. Now, since I want to maximize the 12th guy, what I would do is I would minimize the remaining 11. If I want to minimize the remaining 11, everybody has at least one model card, right? So I start with 1, 2, 3, so on till 11. Plus X should be equal to 660. So therefore, the X will get maximized. So sum of first 11 natural numbers is 11 into 12 divided by 2. This is 2, 1, 2, 6. That means I'm looking at 66 from here. Or therefore, the value of X that we get is going to be 594. So 594 is going to be the maximum number of cars by any patron in that group, given the conditions that we have in this question. So not a difficult question, guys. It is completely based on maxima and minima of averages. So we should uh, have been, uh, you know, we should be, we should have definitely converted this because not a very difficult question at all. And uh, the answer should be 594, right? So let's look at the next question here. Now, this question is a very beautiful question, uh, which is based on geometric progression, guys. Right. So I know that uh, arithmetic progression and geometric progression is yet to be covered. But yeah, if people know geometric progress is a very easy concept. In geometric progression, all that we are looking at is sum to infinite terms in a series in geometric progression. Which is always going to be in the formula of A divided by 1 minus R, where R is always ranging from minus 1 to 1. Okay. Now... Uh, what am I looking at? Uh, if you observe, this question says x is equal to a series in infinite progression and then y is also a series in infinite geometric progression and the question asks you to find the value of 1 plus at plus so on, so on, so on in the form of x and y. So all we would look at it is, let's understand. So the value of x will be the first term is 1 and 1 minus r, the value of r is equal to a here because the common ratio is a here. Right. So let's write A in terms of X. So this gives me X minus X A is equal to 1. Or I get X minus 1 is equal to X A. Or I get A is equal to X minus 1 divided by X. Similarly, if you observe, Y also follows the same suit. This is 1 minus B or eventually I would write Y is equal to, sorry, B is equal to Y minus 1 divided by So we have these two things. And finally, what do we need? Uh, we Our job is to calculate the value of, let's say, S. S is equal to 1 divided by 1 minus R. And what is R? R is A into B. So if I simplify, this becomes 1 minus 1 by, this is X minus 1 divided by X. 
into y minus 1 divided by y. Or we get what here? We get xy. Clear? We get xy minus of x minus 1 into y minus 1. And in the numerator, you get this xy here. Clear, guys? Yep. So what do I get from here? If I can also multiply these terms now. If I want to multiply these terms, this becomes xy divided by this is xy. I keep a minus common. This becomes xy minus x minus y plus 1. So if I simplify, then what do we get finally here? We get xy divided by, you have xy minus xy plus x plus y minus 1. xy, xy gets cancelled. So eventually we have xy divided by x plus y minus 1. So this is what we get and uh, nothing is matching with the options. So therefore, we also have none of these in the options and therefore the answer here becomes none of. So a very easy question of geometric progression. In case you know geometric progression, this becomes a very easy question. So uh, apart from this, I'm expecting you to at least look at the first one. One of the first two questions should have been converted by now, assuming that you do not know geometric progression. So by now, you should have been one question through. Uh, I would be really happy if you would have done two questions. But this is a question that you should have definitely solved. Cost price of two pence is equal to mark price of one pence. CP of two pence is equal to MP of one pence. And uh, we have CP of three pence is equal to SP of two pence. Now, what I would do here is in a very simplified way. Let me assume CP of one pen is equal to X. So what do we have? Let me write it here. If CP of one pen is equal to X, then uh, I have mark price of one pen will be 2X. Okay. And CP of three pens. That means this is 3x is equal to SP of two pens or in short, I get SP of one pen is equal to 1.5x. Now let's go by options. Which of the following statements is correct? So we have to use the options. Option A says mark price of four pens. Mark price of four pens is four into 2x, which is 8x. Is equal to selling price of three pens. SP of three pens is three into 1.5x, which is 4.5x. And these two are not equal. So first one is not my answer. I go to my second one. Discount of 20% is offered. Uh, if I look at discount, the discount is 0.5x divided by 2x multiplied by 100. So 5 by 20 is 1 by 4. 1 by 4 is going to be 25 percentage. But no, discount of 20%, which is wrong. Mark price of 3 pence. Mark price of 3 pence is 2x into 3, which is 6x is equal to selling price of 4 pence. 4 into 1.5x is equal to 6x and these two are definitely equal. If these two are equal, then I know that this is going to be my answer. So option, option C should be your required answer. Right? So very good question to convert, guys. So this should have been your second question to convert on a safer side. Right? Let's move to the next question. Now, I would uh, definitely say you should have solved this question because the best part is this has been directly picked up from the classroom model. If you observe, we have seen this question in modulus class. Anything which is inside the mod should be positive or negative. So first thing is if mod of x minus 2 is greater than 0, then x is greater than 2. This is my condition. And uh, x squared is equal to x minus 2 in a very simplified way or we have x square minus x plus 2 is equal to 0. Now if I observe b square minus 4ac here is negative. I repeat b square minus 4ac is less than 0 so therefore this part will have no real roots. Now, this case 1 is done. Now, let's go to case 2. Case 2 says if x minus 2 is less than 0 or we have x is less than 2. If x is less than 2, then what do we have? Instead of mod, we write a minus bracket. This becomes just a plus. And mod is removed with a bracket sign here. So, what do we get? We get x square plus x. Minus 2 is equal to 0, which will give me x square plus 2x minus x. Uh, minus 2 is equal to 0. x common x plus 2 
minus 1 common x plus 2 is equal to 0. So we have x minus 1 into x plus 2 is equal to 0. So what are the values of x? 1 comma minus 2 are the values of x. Our job is to cross check with this. 1 comma minus 2, both of them are satisfying, which means how many real values will satisfy? Two real values of this given condition are acceptable and therefore your answer becomes 2. Right? So, by now I repeat three questions on a minimum to four questions you should have definitely converted depending on uh, whether you have picked up both the first questions or not. So, even if I'm going on a conservative side, you should have definitely picked three questions. So, please understand guys, our main job is to see that we are not ignoring the easy questions. And since it's coming up directly from the classroom model, that is why we make you practice a lot, right? So this is more of a study center approach at Apex that we follow, which means we practice a lot of questions. So when I practice a lot of questions, it's very important for me to see that I'm able to convert the easy questions. Okay, let's move to the next question. Now, this question says, Puneet, a shrewd and unethical milkman buys pure unadulterated milk from a frontier dairy junction. Okay, let's say he gets... 100 liters of pure milk. Uh, and then he adds water, which is equal to 10 percentage of the volume of the pure milk. That means he adds 10 liters of water. He further marks the price of adulterated milk up by 10 percentage. So let me assume that CP of 1 liter of milk is equal to 10, which means MP of 1 liter of milk here becomes 11. Clear now, what is the discount he should offer on the mark price so that he should have neither profit nor loss? Okay, so let's try to understand it. What is his total cost price? If you observe, uh, let me raise this part here. So I'm writing it here. Mark price of 1 liter is equal to 11. So he has a total of 110 liters. Clear? And the total cost price is 100 liters into 10, which is equal to 1000 rupees. So 110 liters costed him 1000 rupees. Now, what is the total mark price? He has 110 liters, 110 into 11. So his total mark price becomes 1210. Now, if he is supposed to make no profit, no loss, that means the SP should also be equal to 1000 rupees, which means he has to offer a discount of how much guys? 210 rupees. On a marked price of 1 to 1 0 rupees multiplied by 100. So if I take up uh, my calculator. Clear? Yeah, so it's uh, 210 divided by 1 to 1 0 which is 17.355. Okay. 17.355 or we can also approximate it to 17.4 percentage. Again, a very easy question. So after this question on a conservative side, I expect you guys to get four questions. Type. Not a difficult question. No, con no, no uh, complicated conditions. Simple statements, simple calculations. So on a very conservative side, I'm expecting my students to convert the four questions so far and this is a must solve question now this again comes under the concept called unitary method a uh, very easy question and they just made it slightly complicated let's see to make a composition c uh, a and b are mixed in the ratio of 5 is to 6 or 5 is to x now to make a composition p a and C are mixed in the ratio of 6K. Let's say this is YK. And I know C law, the ratio of A and B is in the ratio of 5 is to X. Let's focus here. Why am I focusing here? Because the question is asking you, find the amount of metal B required in terms of X and Y to make 100 ounces of P. So I need to connect P with B. Clear. So, if I'm taking 6K and YK, that means uh, 6K plus YK ounces of P has how many ounces of B? Okay. So, how many ounces of B here, guys? 
So B here would be X divided by five plus X into YK. Clear? So six K plus YK ounces of P has X by five plus X into YK ounces of P. So one ounce of P will give you how much? X into YK divided by 5 plus x and I bring this to my denominator. So I would write this as into 6 plus y and I'm taking a k common. So I know this k and this k gets cancelled. If one ounce has this much, I need to calculate for 100 ounces of p, how much do I need? So I multiply this by 100. So 100 xy, this becomes 5 plus x into 6 plus y. So be a little careful. 5 plus x into 6 plus y into uh, and the numerator is 100xy, which is an option B because there's a slight confusion between B and D. And the examiner has knowingly given you those closed values. So you should have solved this question for sure. It comes under the concept of unitary method, which we have done in standard H. Clear? Calculating the value of 1 and then calculating the value of 100. So very simple question, miscellaneous zone. This should have been your fifth question to answer in this paper. Again, no complications involved. In a very simplified way, if you solve, you should have got the answer. So very lovely question on mixtures is what I would always say. Right? Now let's look at this question, guys. Now this question says... Uh, a team of hay makers were asked, were assigned to the task of scything two meadows, one twice the size of the other. Okay, fair enough. So for a half day, uh, a team worked on the larger meadow and then they split into two groups. Now, to be very honest, what did I do, you know, because half day is again a very weird one. So what did I do is I took, let's say one day consists of eight hours. And the team consisted of 2x pp. I started with this assumption because see, till when you are holding on to assumptions, your answer will not go wrong. So for half day, four people worked on the larger meadow, four into 2x. They worked on the larger meadow. Okay. Now then they split into two parts, two equal groups. That means x people worked on the larger meadow. And then I have smaller meadow also. Smaller meadow X people work. And finished, uh, first remained in the larger meadow and finished it by evening. That means they work for four hours. X men work for four hours. This was the total quantity of larger meadow. The second group cited uh, the smaller meadow by evening. But, so this also did for four hours. But a portion was incomplete. So one person in one single day's work, that means eight hours completed this day, the next day. Okay. So this is what is given in the question. Now we are only supposed to use the first part. That is the total size of the larger middle is twice the, this is equal to two times of the size of the smaller middle. So this is 8x plus 4x that gives you 12x is equal to 2 into 4x, which will give you 8x plus 2 into 8, which is 16. So we get 4x is equal to 16, or we get the value of x is equal to 4. If the value of x is equal to 4, the question is asking you how many men were there in the team. So 2x men were there in the team. So therefore, our answer here becomes 2 into 4. That means 8 men were there in the team, and therefore your answer becomes 8. Clear, guys? So this becomes our answer here. So it's a very simple question, not a difficult one at all. And uh, we should have got the answer of this question very easily altogether. Clear? Now let's look at the next question. In a motorcycle race, one of the three motorbikes that started out at the same time, so all the three of them started at the same time, uh, was at 15 kilometers per, per hour less than the first one. Okay? So let's say the first one. I am talking about speed. If the speed of the first one was x, the speed of the second one was x minus 15. 
and this was 3 kilometers per hour more than the third one if this was 3 kilometers per hour more than the third one so i would take this as x minus 18 x minus 18 plus 3 here the gap is plus 3 this plus 3 is equal to this and this minus 15 is equal to this a very simple way of looking at it okay this is p now it arrived at the terminal point okay 12 minutes after the first motorbike, let's say T minutes is taken by the first motorbike, this guy took T plus 12. And uh, 6 minutes before the third motorbike, that means this becomes T plus 18. So T plus 18 minus 6 is T plus 12. And uh, 12 minutes after, right? So after 12 minutes is completely fine. And we know that all of them started at the same time and there is the terminal point also, which means, can I say the distance covered is equal to same? So distance covered in this case becomes X into T. Distance covered in this case becomes XT plus 12X minus 15T minus 180. And distance covered in this case becomes XT plus 18x minus 18t minus 324 and we have seen a similar question if you remember in the class that uh, if it's traveling at six kilometers per hour faster just one second guys five questions this should have been the sixth question and this should have been the seventh question why seventh question because we have seen in class if a person is traveling at five kilometers or six kilometers per hour at a more than the usual speed is reaching six hours less and so on, so on, so on. A very simple question, okay? So what I can do is I can equate first and second and I can equate first and third, okay? So this is my first equation. This is my second equation and this is my third equation. So what does first and second give us? So we have xt is equal to xt plus 12x minus 15t minus 180 xt xt gets cancelled so eventually what do we have i can divide across by 3 so i get 4x minus 5t is equal to 60 and second case also has 1 and 3 equation 1 and 3 xt is equal to xt plus 18x minus 18t minus 324 Again, x t x t gets cancelled. If I divide by 18, then what do I get? I get x minus t is equal to 18. Okay. So I want the value of t, right? So if I multiply this equation by 4 and I subtract. So what do we have? We have 4x minus 5t is equal to 60. And this is 4x minus 4t is equal to 72. Minus plus and uh, minus so this gets cancelled so you have a minus t is equal to minus 12 or the value of t is equal to 12. If the value of t is equal to 12 and the question is asking you what is the time taken by the third motorbike so i'm assuming t is in the form of minutes so time taken by third motorbike is t plus 18 now t plus 18 will be 12 plus 18 which is equal to 30 minutes is the time taken by the third motorbike and therefore your answer here becomes 30. So very easy question, not a difficult one at all, right? And uh, this should have been your seventh question, seventh question of the paper, guys. Please understand why am I considering these questions? My point of consideration is if question has not given you any complicated statement, we should be definitely solving those questions, right? And no complication, I can directly enter solve and come out in two to three minutes, not more than three minutes, right? But I think it's a good paper to solve. Almost every question is a doable question. Now, on a rhythm, B is an intermediate station equidistant from stations A and C. Okay. A boat can go to A and B and come back in 6 hours if it takes 4 hours to go from A to C. Now, if it's 4 hours to go from A to C, that means A to B would take 2 hours and B to C would also take 2 hours because B is the intermediate station. Okay. Now, going from A to B, and I know that coming back from B to A, we have taken a total of how many hours, guys? Six hours. So, going from A to B is two hours. So, can I say coming back from B to A is equal to four hours? So, I repeat, going is two hours. Coming back is four hours. 
So this part, I'm writing coming back here. Okay, this is a two journey and this is a pro journey. On the top, I'm writing two journey. On the bottom, I'm writing pro journey. So B to A would take how many hours, guys? Or else? Clear? Similarly, if it's equidistant, if B to A is taking four hours, can I say B to C also will take four hours to come back? How long would it take to come from C to A? So C to B will take four hours and then B to A will also take four hours. That means the total time taken to come back from C to A will be a total of eight hours. That should be our required. Clear, guys? Right, let's move to the next one. Uh, so this is again a very simple question, guys. Whenever you see a question on functions, it is always coming up as a part of iterative functions. So let's see this question. So f of x, okay, f of x denotes the square of the sum of the digits of uh, x. So let's look at this f of 11. f square of x denotes f of f of x and so on, so on, so on. F, I want f of 11. So f of 11 is the square of the sum of the digits that becomes 1 plus 1 whole square. Which gives me how much, guys? That is 2 square, which is 4. Now, f2 of 11 is equal to f of f of 11. Now, what is f of f of 11? Now, f of 11 is equal to 4. So, I can write this as f of 4, f2, 4, f2, 11, sorry. f2, 11 is equal to f of 4. Now, what is f of 4? f of 4 will be, again, the square of the sum of the digits that is equal to 16. Now, f3, 11 is equal to f of f of f of 11. Now, we know this complete part. f of f of 11 is in the previous one. f of f of 11 is equal to f of 4, which is equal to 16. So this can be written as f of 16. Now, what is f of 16? 1 plus uh, 6, that is 7. 7 square is equal to 49. Clear? Similarly, if you observe f of 4 of 11, you got a trend. f of 4 of 11 is equal to f of the previous term. f of the previous term is f of 49. That is 4 plus 9 whole square. 13 square is 169. So, f5 of 11 will be how much, guys? f5 of 11 will be f of 169. 9 plus 1, 10. 10 plus 6 is 16. 16 square is 256. Now, f6 of 11. Now, this is where the whole program ends. f6 of 11 is equal to f of 256, which is equal to 2 plus 5, which is, uh, this is equal to how much, guys? 16 square. This is equal to 13 square. Now, this will give you how much, guys? 13 square, which is 169. Now, if you observe from here, the trend is repeating. F7 of 11 will be again F of 169, which will be equal to 256. So this sequence will keep on repeating. So, if you observe, F4 is equal to 169. F5 is equal to 256. F6 is equal to 169 f7 is equal to 256 so what is happening f4 f6 f8 all these are even powers right so f of 1000 will also be this value which is equal to 169 so all you have to do is understand what is happening in the previous case okay. so find a trend the minute the trend starts we stop solving it from there and then we start identifying what is the game and therefore this game here tells that 169 is going to be my final value altogether clear guys now let's look at the next question the next question says again a very interesting question mr munish is a computer programmer he is assigned the three jobs for which the time allocated is 5 is to 4 is to 2 let me take this as 500x 400x and 200x jobs are needed to be done but due to some technical lag 10 percent of job one 12.5 is 1 by 8 50x and 25 percent is lost so 1 by 4 is again 50x is lost clear and he invests only 50 percent of the time allocated that means 250x Clear? 40% of this, this is 160x and 30% of this, 30% of 20 is equal to 60x. 
So 260 plus 160 plus 60, right? 160 plus 60 is 220, 250 plus 220 is 470. So this is the time that he has invested. And 150x is automatically wasted, which means the total time that he has invested in this already is 620. Whereas the allotted time is equal to 1100x. Allotted. A-L-L-O-T-T-E-D. This is the time wasted, which he has to utilize. He can't help it. And this is the time invested. Clear? So therefore, finally, what do we have? How, what, how much percentage of the total time is utilized by Munich? That will be 620 divided by 1100 in 200. Double zero, double zero gets cancelled. 11 pies are 55. And then you have a 70, 11, 6, uh, 66. And then you have a 0.36. So 56.36 percentage will be your answer and that is going to be option B. So again, a very easy question, guys. Just to conclude, uh, this should have been a seventh question. This is a very easy question. Eighth question, I'm assuming that you would have left uh, this question, okay? Again, I'm assuming on a conservative side, but this is again an easy question. So till here, nine questions should have been definitely solved and I think that's giving us a very fair advantage in this game. And uh, let's look at the next questions and see how many more can we solve. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's look at the next question, guys. So, uh, what is happening? Yeah, cool. Again, a very interesting question, guys. So, so far, nine questions done. A very interesting question on simple interest and compound interest. Okay, so Shubham invested some money in a long term tax saver investment scheme, which gives an interest of uh, which gives an interest compounded annually. The amount becomes 1,24,000 after 4 years. That means I have P into 1 plus R by 100 whole to the power 4 is equal to 1,24,000. And similarly, I have, let's say this is my first equation. And I have P into 1 plus R by 100 whole to the power 12 is equal to 1,55,000. <clears throat> okay. So what am I looking at here, guys? If I'm looking at this part here, so in compound interest, the best part is we can always divide them. So when I divide it two by one, okay? Dividing two by one, what do we get? We get one plus R by 100 whole to the power eight. We get it as 1,55,000 divided by 1,24,000. So three zeros, three zeros gets cancelled. This is 31 fives are and 31 fours are. So this is five by four. That is one plus R by 100 whole to the power eight. And in compounding, always when amounts are given, divide them. Okay. Now, what is the compound interest earned in 24 years as a percentage of the amount kept in the beginning? So what is the question asking us? P into one plus R by 100 whole to the power 24. Minus P, this is the compound interest zone, that is amount minus principal, as a percentage of the principal invested at the beginning. So if you observe, if I take P common here, what do I get? I get 1 plus R by 100 whole to the power 24 minus 1 divided by P into 1. So P and P gets cancelled. Now, let's understand this. Can I say 1 plus R by 100 whole to the power 24 is nothing but 1 plus R by 100 whole to the power 8 whole cube. Clear? So therefore, this should give me 5 by 4 whole cube. Now, 5 by 4 whole cube gives me 125 by 64 minus 1 into 100. This is what we are looking at. And uh, therefore, what do we get from here? This is 125. 1 can be written as 64 by 64 which will give you 61 by 64 in 200. Now, the point is quite simple. 61 by 64 is close to 100 percentage, right? So by default, your answer here becomes 95.3 percentage should be the required answer. So not a difficult question, but yes, you need to deal with the numbers. You need to understand what is the question asking you. Because sometimes what happens is the minute students have 1 plus R by 100 whole to the power 8, they stop thinking here saying that, oh my God, the numbers are very big and how do I solve this for them? So you need to understand that your job is to play with numbers in this question, but you're going a little conservative. I'm not counting this as one of the questions that you should be solving, okay? So, so far we are still holding at nine easily doable questions, which you could have done in around 25 to 27 minutes altogether, okay?
Now, one more beautiful question on coordinate geometry. So let's try to understand a certain line is drawn through a point A, which is at 6, comma minus 7. So let's say this is my point called A, which is 6, comma minus 7, which cuts X axis. So let me just cut this at X axis with 60 degrees. Okay, so this is 60 degrees. At a certain point B. Now, if it's cutting at x axis, so therefore the coordinates of this becomes let's say x comma zero. Clear? Now I have a line. I am already having a point that is six comma minus seven, and I have a slope. So can I have equation of a line, which is point slope equation, right? So point slope equation of a line. I repeat, point slope equation of a line is equal to y minus y1 which is y minus of minus 7 is equal to slope into x minus x what is slope here slope i can also calculate it as tan theta clear so slope is equal to tan 60 now tan 60 is equal to root clear so what do we have finally here we have y plus 7 is equal to root 3 times of x minus 6 is the equation that we have here. Clear? Now, if this equation of a line, and I know that the point x comma 0 is also on this line. So, let's equate y is equal to 0 here. If I equate y is equal to 0 here, then what do I get from here? If I equate y is equal to 0, then we get 7 by root 3 is equal to x minus 6 or we get the value of x is equal to 7 by root 3 plus 6. Clear? So can I say from here that the point A has coordinate 6 comma minus 7 and the point B has coordinate 7 by root 3 plus 6 comma 0. Since I have both the points, now we are looking at the distance between them. Now the distance between them is uh, x2 minus x1 whole square plus y2 minus y1 whole square whole root 2, right? So the distance between AB. So distance of AB is going to be whole root over of x2 minus x1, that is 7 by root 3 plus 6 minus 6 square, clear? Plus 0 minus of minus 7 whole square. So this will give you how much guys? This will give you 49 by 3 plus this will give you another 49 whole root over. So finally, what do we have? We have 4 into 49 by 3 whole root over. Yes, so 4 can come out. So I can write 2 root of 49 divided by 3. So this becomes one of my possible answers. And I have option C as one of the answers. So not a very difficult question. But again, since I'm going very conservatively, I'm assuming that um, maybe you might not know so many formulas, but yeah, it's time for to revise the formulas because it's a very simple question. I want the distance between A, B, right? So I just need to know the value of X and uh, I just need the value of X from here. And I have slope given to me and I have Y coordinate given to me. So I'll try to see how do we use this and how do we get our required answers. Clear? Now let's look at this question. Now this question is a very interesting question that is made. So I have two drinks, P and Q, made of lime and water, both. Okay. So we have, uh, let's say, the ratio of lime to water in P is equal to 8 is to 1. Let's say 8x and x. So total is 9x here. Okay. And let's say Q is a different ratio. So I'm talking about this as 2y and 7y. This is equal to 8y. Sorry, 9y. It is found that if drinks P and Q are mixed in a certain ratio, let's say the ratio is 9x is to 9y. So I am mixing them in the ratio of x is to y or x divided by. <clears throat> Clear? So x divided by y in a certain ratio, then the volumes of lime and water in the resultant drink are also in the same ratio. Okay, in the same ratio as in the ratio in which they are mixed. The same ratio is referred to this certain ratio. Okay. So I talk about this as 8x plus 2y is the complete volume of lime. x plus 7y is the complete volume of uh, water, which is equal to x divided by y. So if we cross multiply, what do we get? We get 8xy plus 2y square is equal to x square plus 7xy. 
clear -ish. so we can also further simplify this as 8xy or 8xy minus x so this is xy and then we have let's say a minus x square plus 2y square is equal to 0. Okay, or let's take everything to the right hand side. If I take everything to the right hand side, I am looking at this as plus x square minus 2y square, or let me write this as minus xy and plus, sorry, uh, this is minus xy and this is minus 2y square is equal to 0. Now, instead of further trying to solve this, our job majorly here is going to be to get the value of x and y, right? x by y. If I want the value of x by y, what you can do is remember this process, divide the complete equation by y square. If I divide by y square, this becomes x by y whole square minus x y by y square minus 2 y square by y square is equal to 0. And I would write x by y as r. So this will give you r square minus r minus 2 is equal to 0. We get r square minus 2r plus r minus 2 is equal to 0. We take an r common that becomes r minus 2. We take a plus 1 common that again becomes r minus 2 is equal to 0. So eventually we have r plus 1 into r minus 2 is equal to 0. And I'm talking about the ratio of x and y, right? So I'm talking about ratio of x and y. That means the ratio is always going to be a positive number. Right. So either the value of R is going to be minus one or the value of R is going to be two. Right. So therefore, X is to Y is assumed as two is to one. And this becomes my final answer, which is going to be option B. So a very lovely question, which is indirectly asking you to apply uh, X is to Y in a quadratic equation. And that is something that you guys need to keep in mind. So please, in case you do not know this method of calculating the ratio, Please remember this method of calculating the ratio. As of now, I'm not including this in the prospective list of questions. So far, we are still down with nine questions only. Right? So you should not have hesitated to move out of this question, maybe after reaching this point. And that is like maximum one and a half minute or something. Okay? Now, again, a very interesting question in the given figure. We are looking at uh, triangle ABC is given to us and uh, we are having bc blah 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 angles are also given clear if angles are also given one angle is given right if one angle is given what i can do is uh, so let's see one angle is given and can i take another angle as common let's see i'm talking about triangle b c and d I'm talking about triangle ABC. So here angle B is equal to angle B. Both of them are same, same angles. Now angle BCD is equal to angle BAC. Right? So can I say these two triangles are similar? If these two triangles are similar, then we have BC by BA is equal to BD by BC, which is equal to CD by AC. And they should also be equal to the ratio of the perimeters, okay? Perimeters of triangle BCD divided by perimeters of triangle BAC and so on and so on and so on. Clear? Why am I taking perimeter? Because the question is talking about perimeter only, right? So what do I have? I have BC from here and or we can have BD and BC. If you observe, we can use this ratio. Clear? And what I would do is I'm slightly changing the ink here. So please don't get confused. Let me assume that this part is equal to X. This part is equal to Y. Okay. So BD, what is BD? BD is 9. What is BC? BC is 12. Is equal to perimeter of triangle BCD. BCD is 12 plus 9 is 21. 21 plus 6 is 27. Divided by perimeter of triangle BAC. This is 9 ones are 9 threes are. So what do I get? I get perimeter of triangle ABC or BAC doesn't make a difference is equal to 36. Now from the figure, what am I looking at? I am looking at 9 plus 12 plus 6, which is 27. So 27 plus X plus Y is equal to 36. Or eventually we have X plus Y is equal to 9. 
Now I have x plus y. What is the question asking you? Find the ratio of perimeter of the triangle ADC. So what is ADC? So triangle ADC perimeter will be equal to x plus y plus 6. Clear? So x plus y is equal to 9. 9 plus 6 is equal to 15. S2 triangle BDC. What is BDC? BDC is 27. So our required ratio is 15 is to 27, which is 3 fives are and 3 nines are. Right. So therefore, the answer is going to be 5 is to 9 here, guys. Okay. There's one mistake that I've committed here, guys. The triangle ABC is not 27. ABC will be uh, 9. Let me just erase this part. I've just gone wrong here, guys. So perimeter of triangle ABC is equal to 36. Okay. Let me just erase this part. Okay. What is ABC? ABC will be 9 plus X plus 12 plus Y is equal to 36 or we get x plus y is equal to 15 here that's my bad if x plus y is equal to 15 then i'm talking about triangle adc what is the perimeter of triangle adc that is x plus y plus 6 so perimeter of triangle adc is 21 and therefore the required ratio is 21 is to 27 that is going to be 7 is to 9 should be your required answer so not an easy convert it's a very lovely question right where uh, perimeter has to be considered as sum of all the sides and then you get your answers. So again, I'm not considering this unless you're sure of the similarity concept. This doesn't become one of the questions of your preferred options, right? So we're still at nine questions down. Let's see, what are we looking at this? Now, we're looking at the next question as A and B are two positive real numbers, okay? So if A and B are two positive real numbers, let me use the red ink only. So I have A root A plus B root B is equal to 32. So what can I do is I can square it up. So root A whole square will be A. So this will give you how much there? This will give us A cube. Clear? Plus this will give me how much? B cube. Uh, plus 2AB. Right? So that will give you plus 2AB. And that will give you root AB is equal to 32 square. 32 square is equal to 1024. Similarly, I have A root B plus B root A is equal to 31. Now, if you observe, if you square this also, we will get 2AB into root AB. And this will give you how much, guys? This will give you A square B plus B square A plus this is equal to 961. So, if I eliminate the root part, this gets cancelled. So what do I have? I have a cube minus a square b plus b cube minus b square a is equal to 63. Clear guys? So from here I can take a square common. This will be a minus b plus b square common. This will be a b minus a is equal to 63. So what can I do is I can further write this as I can change the sign here. To make this as a minus b so i'll write this as a square into a minus b minus b square if i take minus b square this becomes a minus b in that case it will be minus b square a and this will be plus b cube which equal to 63 so i have a square minus b square into a minus b is equal to 63 or this can be written as a minus b whole square because i can write this as a plus b into a minus b. So a minus b whole square into a plus b is equal to 63. If I'm looking at this, clear? Now I can see that uh, 63, I can write this as 7 into 9. Clear? Or let's say this is, uh, yeah, I can write this as, and this is a perfect, this is a square, okay? So I'm writing this as 9 into 7. Or this can be written as 3 into 21 also. Clear, right? But the thing is, if I'm asking you, what is the value of uh, 5 times of A plus B by 7? You can assume any one of the values. So let's say I'm taking 5 times of this case. 
seven divided by seven. Clear? So I'm taking five times of seven divided by seven. So seven and seven gets cancelled, and therefore the final value is going to be five here. Clear? And you need to also ensure that these two conditions have to be satisfying. Okay. So if uh, a minus B whole square is equal to three. Then I'm taking A minus B is equal to three. And then I'm taking A plus B is equal to seven and so on, so on, so on. But the question is saying positive real numbers, right? Then the denominator has seven. I just started taking this value that is nine into seven. And uh, this becomes five into seven divided by seven. Therefore, five is going to be your required answer. Not an easy question because if you look at this, <clears throat> there's also a doubt called uh, three and 21 will also satisfy. So five is just one of the values and that's what you see in the options or in the solution. This is the only value that he has considered, but I was not very much convinced with this because you can also take three into 21 and then further solve it and all. So overall, not a very comfortable question to look at. So I would say you could have definitely left this question the minute you would have seen this question in the whole process. Clear? Right. Let's look at the next question. Yep, let's look at the next question, guys. The next question says, uh, again, a very easy question. This should have been our 10th question of the paper. Because to me, this was a very easy question. Now, two candidates were contesting for the post of a Rotary Club chairman. In the first round of voting, 550% people candidate uh, participated. In the second round, also 550 members. However, the number of members opposed to the first candidate increased by 150%. Opposed to the first candidate. That's a first candidate and the second candidate. So number of people opposing the first candidate is nothing but the number of people in favor of the second candidate. So let me assume and 150% is 3 by 2. So let me assume that 2x people voted this guy in the first round. In the second round, it increased by 150%. That means it increased by 3x. So in the second round, or in the second case, 5x people voted for the second candidate. And total 550 members voted. If 2x voted here, then this becomes 550 minus 2x. And this becomes 550 minus 5x. Clear? Now the combined votes of the first candidate exceeded that of the second candidate by 400. So combined votes of the first candidate becomes... 1100 minus 7x exceeds, that is minus 7x is equal to 400. So eventually what do we get here, guys? We get uh, minus 14x and this is 1100 is equal to 400. Or we have uh, 700 is equal to 14x or the value of x is equal to 15. Now, how many members oppose the first candidate? Opposing the first candidate means in favor of the second candidate, right? So that becomes 2x, which is 2 into 50, which is going to be equal to 100. Okay? So therefore, the answer for this question becomes 100. Clear? So there's a lot of disturbance outside. I'll just pause this video for some time, and then we'll restart this video recording in one minute, guys, okay? Yep, let's look at the next question, guys. Now, again, a very interesting application of logarithms, okay? Now, observe, what am I looking at? I'm looking at x plus 1. And I already have x here. So, what do I use here is, if I have log bc base a is equal to x, if I want x plus 1, I'm adding 1 on my right-hand side, I'm adding 1 on my left-hand side. This can be written as log bc base a, and 1 can be written as log a base a which is equal to x plus 1, or eventually x plus 1 can be written as log a, b, c, base a. Similarly, if I take log c, a, base b, and I add 1 on my left-hand side, and I add 1 on my right-hand side, which will give me log c, a, base b, plus log b, base b, is equal to y plus 1, which is again equal to log base b common a b c and similarly if you continue log a b base c plus 1 is equal to z plus 1 which is equal to log a b base c plus log c base c which is equal to z plus 1 which is again equal to 
log base c common that is abc now this is x plus one so can i say from here one by x plus one will be equal to log a base abc because what are we applying here guys we are applying log a base b is equal to one by log clear b base a Clear? So if I write 1 by log B base A, so therefore this also gives me what? This also gives me 1 by Y plus 1 is equal to, if I inverse this, this again becomes log B to the base ABC. And if I write this as 1 by Z plus 1, I'm inversing this, this becomes log C to the base ABC. Now if I'm adding all of them, what do I get? So 1 by x plus 1 plus 1 by y plus 1 plus 1 by z plus 1 will give me what guys? Will actually give me log a base abc plus log b base abc plus log c base abc. So eventually what do I have? I have log abc base abc and your final answer becomes equal to 1. And therefore, one becomes your final answer. So very beautiful question. So till here, we are looking at 10 questions, guys. On a very safe side. So very lovely question, application of logs. You can have, you would have just solved this and you would have got your answer. Not considering this to be converted question because not a very easy question either. But yes, expecting you to look at this for sure, okay? Now, this is again a very easy question of permutations and combinations since we have already done in the class. Golden Rod and No Hope are two horses which are uh, amongst the six contestants that we are looking at. Okay, how many different arrangements of finishes are there? If no hope always finishes before golden rod, we have discussed this. If A always comes before B, will be nothing but total number of arrangements divided by two. So six people can arrange themselves in six places in six factorial ways and no hope, no hope should be before golden rod will be half of the cases. And that's going to be 720 divided by 2, which is going to be 360 should be your answer. So this should be your answer. Very easy question. You should have definitely converted. So this becomes my 11th easy question of the paper. Clear, guys? Now let's look at this question. Uh, the line segment uh, divides the parallelogram. Let's write this part as y. So we know one thing from parallelogram or any quadrilateral. Okay. If I'm writing this part. Okay, so let's say this is, uh, I'm terming this as A, B, C, F, and D. So I know that the triangle A, B, F is equal to half of the parallelogram A, B, C, D. Similarly, if I'm looking at this part, Right, A, B, C, D, and E. So I also know that triangle A, E, D is equal to half of parallelogram A, B, C. Okay, so what is A, B, F? So if I look at A, B, F, here I know that uh, A, B, and F. So this part is equal to 63 plus Y plus X, right? So I can write this as 63 plus x plus y is equal to half of a, b, c, d. And what is a, e, d? If you observe, this is a, e, d. a, e, d is nothing but 48 plus 21. Clear? That is 69 plus y is equal to half of a, b, c, d. So I can equate both of them. So I get 63 plus x plus y is equal to 69 plus y y gets cancelled or the value of x is equal to 6. And what is the question asking you? Triangle in the blue area, which is x, and therefore 6 should be your answer. Not a very difficult theorem, but you are not considering this as one of the prospective questions. So you should have looked at 11 easy questions. Uh, last question, which is a very easy question on profit and loss. This should have been your 12th very easy question. So in this paper, I am looking at a minimum score of 30 plus. Clear? Even if you're picking up 36, this becomes a very ideal score in this paper. So which 12 you are looking at maximizing, look at this. So anywhere between 30, 36, I would say you have played your cards very well. Anything more than 36 is what you're racing towards the 99 percentile. I would say 30, 36 in a main cap paper should be somewhere between 90 to 93 percentile or 95 percentile. 
because these are the questions that you could have picked and you could have solved not so difficult questions so this is the selection criteria you should have looked at these many questions right a merchant was getting 10 percentage by selling rice right so let's say if 100x was the cost price he was selling at 110x Owing to the plus, he paid 2.5 per kg more. That is 100x plus 2.5 per kg. And he sold 1 kg for 4.5 rupees more than before, thus gaining 20%. So cost price into multiplying factor is equal to selling price. This gives me 120x. And what is 12 to 25 into 12? That is uh, 30. 300. 25 to 12 is 300. Followed by two zeros is equal to 110 plus 4.5. Or we get 10x is equal to 1.5. And the question asking you find the cost price. That means I want the value of 100x, which is going to be into 10 and into 10. And therefore, my answer here becomes 15. Right. So this becomes your 12th very easy question, guys. So not a very difficult paper. 12 questions were there. You should have picked up. So analyze why did you not pick these 12 questions? Go back and see what, how could you have solved the remaining 10 questions and accordingly we could have slowly moved forward, right? So just keep working on the question selection, guys. I'm sure the next 40, 45 days, we should be at a very good position to see ourselves crossing these 10, 12 questions per mark, okay? So definitely you should have picked up 10 to 12 questions in this paper, not committed calculation mistakes, safe out and you should have got your answer right always guys keep learning if you have any doubts please do not hesitate to get in touch thank you and happy learning guys thank you